Well, a tool that frequently comes up in the business environment, and a lot of uh, different businesses actually use them, is what we call a SWOT analysis. And SWOT is an acronym for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, as well as threats. And SWOT analysis is a tool that a company uses to complete an object objective analysis of that particular company. Now, you don't have to necessarily work for a particular company to obviously conduct a SWOT analysis, but they have a lot of different benefits that we'll actually review. Okay. Uh, so first thing, you know, there are four different quadrants or four different areas that businesses have to complete an analysis in, which means they have to do a little bit of research and find out, you know, what are some of the things that they're good at, not so good at. Uh, and the way the SWOT analysis is broken up is there are categories that are considered to be internal and there are categories that are considered to be external. Okay. Now, something that is internal is something that the firm or the company has control over. Okay, they typically have some effect on what goes on in the internal environment. And those are actually strengths as well as weaknesses. Uh, those are considered to be internal factors because the company usually has some control over what they're good at and what they're not so good at. And going through these one by one, a strength is something that the company does that provides itself a competitive advantage, something that they do that no other company does better than them. Now, this is the, the thing that the, the company is known for. Okay? For example, a company like Walmart, one of their largest strengths is the fact that they can maintain a very low cost, which allows them to price their products uh, much lower than a lot of their competitors can because they have the ability to keep their costs low. And that has a lot to do with the fact that they're just so large of a corporation, they can demand certain concessions from suppliers because they're purchasing such a large quantity of goods that it makes up for it on that end there. That would be a strength for Walmart, of course. Uh, positive brand recognition is another example of a strength. Some companies are well known. You see the image and the logo and you instantly have positive feelings. It evokes positive emotions regarding a particular brand. And those types of companies merely have to put their logo on a particular product and people would buy it regardless because they have strong brand recognition. They're viewed positively. They've produced quality products and services before. And that, of course, contributes to a strong brand recognition. Another example is a skilled workforce. A skilled workforce is a very significant strength because human resources, uh, in large part, is the greatest asset that most companies can have. And that's good, quality, skilled employees to do the work. Uh, they're very hard to come by. And employers that can retain their workers, continually train them, can serve as a competitive advantage. One example I'll give you is Costco. Okay. Uh, Costco is very well known for having a, a, a longer or higher tenure track than most other companies in that same industry. Now, the retail environment is very heavily dependent upon, obviously, people, but there are, is a lot of turnover. People are, are constantly being hired and leaving and hired and leaving. And the typical retail model, if you're trying to maintain low prices, you typically have to maintain low costs, meaning that you don't pay your employees very significantly. Well, Costco has done something kind of outside of the norm for that industry. They pay very high wages for the industry. They offer benefits for part-time employees and a lot of other attract attractive perks that some of the other retailers don't necessarily offer. And that provides them with a, with a benefit of having workers that stay there longer. Right? The tenure for the average worker at Costco is much greater than the tenure for a worker at, let's say, Walmart, for example, which historically pays very, very low wages, comparatively speaking, to other companies within the industry. And so that gives them advantage because if you're not having to retrain your workers over and over, they're probably going to get good at what they do over time. Right? Someone who's worked for a company for three to five years is going to probably do that job better and more efficiently than someone who has worked for the job less than a year. On top of that, that also has a cost savings because instead of committing resources and management resources into training new employees, those are resources that can be devoted to other areas. So that provides a significant advantage. 
Next one I'll review is financial resources, and that includes access to cash. Uh, cash is a very, very important resource because without it, not a lot of things can happen, unfortunately. And so if companies have large amounts of cash on hand, that enables them to pursue different options. They have options for that matter. If an opportunity presents itself, then a company can then take advantage of that opportunity. An example of one is Apple um, has a significant amount of cash on hand, somewhere in the realm of $110 billion in cash, which is a significant amount. It's more than any other uh, U.S. company. And that's just to put that in perspective, roughly Apple's operating costs on an annual or per year basis are about $10 billion. So that essentially means that Apple can continue to operate for 11 years without making any money whatsoever and still cover its operating costs, which is very significant. Now, we all know that that probably won't happen. People will continue to purchase Apple products. Uh, but obviously comforting to know that you have that much money set aside for a rainy day, that in the event that something were to happen, you know, economy worsens for any reason, you're positioned well to weather the storm. And that's a very significant strength, especially in economic times in which we're in. Now, in addition to that, we also have weaknesses. Okay? Weaknesses are things that the company does that aren't necessarily positive. They can potentially be a liability for them. Okay? And you'll find that strengths and weaknesses, what generally is not a strength, can potentially be a weakness, but not, not all the time. Right? I mean, certain things companies might be you know, somewhat good at. It might not be a significant weakness, but it still can be. And so obviously very negative brand recognition, right? C companies that have poor customer service and it's widely known, um, that is a significant weakness because that affects future customers going to that particular company to purchase products if they've heard of someone having a bad experience in the past. Things like expiring intellectual property, patents, trademarks, copyrights, uh, certain things that are no longer going to be renewed can be a, a weakness. Rising costs is a significant weakness because that reduces margins. Having an unskilled workforce provides a weakness because you're committing multiple resources into training. And obviously a lack of financial resources. One thing I will say is there are more strengths and weaknesses to consider. Uh, these are merely a few examples of some things that maybe you could look at to determine if a company is strong in one area or maybe that they're not. Maybe their additional resources should be committed to a particular area. Right? Just because something is a weakness doesn't mean it has to stay a weakness. But the benefit of using such a tool is to identify those weaknesses, put resources towards them, and turn those into strengths or at least not as a significant weakness. Now opportunities. When we talk about opportunities and threats, opportunities and threats are considered to be external to the company. And what that means is that the company can't necessarily affect or change these things. These things happen and it's up to the company to try and recognize that as an opportunity. Okay, uh, And obviously if they recognize something as an opportunity, that can serve as a potential avenue for growth and profitability. If an opportunity is not seized, it can quickly turn into a threat, as you'll see in a couple moments here. So examples of opportunities, the most notable one probably, especially in the time that we live in, is new technology. And technology is rapidly changing. Uh, it has so over the last several decades. And that's provided a lot of opportunities for some firms. You look at companies like Amazon, for example. Amazon was able to kind of look at the opportunity of digital books and digital media and obviously was the first to market when they came out with their Kindle e-reader. You know, no other company was in that particular market at the time. In fact, the, the sentiment at least, but prior to that, was that digital books would never surpass physical books in popularity, right? Physical books, you like to to, you could open them, you can feel them, you had the ability to show them, and it's very prestigious. Everyone likes the smell of a new book. And that was the thought process. Why would people want a digital book? Okay, And so this was a new technology at one point that provided a, a great opportunity for Amazon because we all know we have the benefit of obviously seeing what happened, right? And knowing 
that digital books have even surpassed physical books in terms of sales. And so that technology obviously is a significant opportunity for Amazon or was an opportunity for them. Now that same technology posed a threat for other companies, right? Companies like Borders, for example, which Borders is unfortunately now obviously no longer operating. But they failed to adopt that technology. They failed to foresee the impact it would have on the entire industry. And that, of course, led to their eventual demise. The same thing took place when Apple came out with iTunes. Right? People can now purchase digital uh, rights to songs, not necessarily a physical CD. And so a lot of businesses that specialized in selling CDs obviously did no longer continue to operate because that was a threat uh, an opportunity at one point that they failed to adjust to. Another examples of opportunities are relaxing government regulations, right? Initially, regulations that you have to abide by if government is to relax those. Obviously, that is a cost saving, so that can be an opportunity. Uh, elimination of international trade barriers can be an opportunity. If you're prohibited from trading your product with a certain country and all of a sudden those barriers go away, that obviously would be an opportunity. That would be a threat, though, if you are a company operating in that country and your government prohibits any outside companies from doing business with the uh, consumers in that country. That would obviously be a threat because now there's more competition. And next, we have changing consumer preferences. Uh, consumer preferences change very frequently, and companies try to stay in tune with what customers are interested in, what products they want, what services they want, and things change fairly regularly. And so, obviously, if customer preferences change, that can provide an opportunity if a company is well positioned to take advantage of that. And obviously, that could also be a threat if consumers are changing away from using a particular product or service that you frequently sell, which isn't good. And the last thing here is threats. Now, threats are obviously changes in the external environment that have the ability to negatively impact a company. Opportunities and threats are very interlinked. They're very related. Obviously, an opportunity that's not seized tends to become a threat. Examples include emergence of new competitors into the market, right? Certain companies that do well in a certain industry, you know, keeping with the, the example I gave before, Amazon with regards to selling digital books did so fairly well, obviously was successful, and you see the emergence of a lot of new competitors. Apple obviously is a key player. You have Google who is now offering a digital books kind of marketplace. Uh, Barnes & Noble does the same thing. And so now you see the emergence of competitors, which is a potential threat. Now, you have to evaluate how significant the threat is, right? And so it may not be significant, but that's something that you would have to look into, okay? Uh, pending lawsuits is another threat, of course. Lawsuits not only require you to commit financial resources, uh, which goes back to do you have financial resources, right? If that's a weakness, then a lawsuit can pose a significant threat because those gets expensive, especially the longer that they are drawn out. But they also hurt your image. And so lawsuits are, are, are not very positive. Typically, most companies would want to settle before going to uh, court in the long, drawn-out court proceedings because they can be vet very detrimental to a brand. And then obviously new technology, which we went over, which not only applies to digital books, but you look at streaming technology, you deal with Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, and companies that actually rented actual DVDs, and now you see Netflix, their DVD mail order business, streaming content directly to homes, um, obviously making it so that uh, going to a actual physical location to access those materials wasn't very necessary anymore. So these are the four areas that companies need to consider. Strengths, things that they do well internally. Weaknesses, things that they can control that they do not do very well. Opportunities and threats, which are all external potential avenues to achieve greater profitability and greater growth. And then threats, things that have the ability to negatively impact that particular company there. And what you'll find with these is there needs to be some good analysis that's done here. Obviously, if you do kind of a cursory review of some of these different categories, you're not going to find the, the truly valuable things there. And not only do companies use these to evaluate themselves, but if you're considering investing in a particular company, you can use this same tool to hopefully consider some of the things the company is good at. What are some of the threats? What are their opportunities? And you can kind of gauge those and see what are the likelihood that the company can continue to do well. It could be something to look at.